250 years after High Fleet Behemoth was shattered at Macrag, the Tyranid menace would return. Striking from within and without across a wide front, thousands of worlds were doomed to be stripped of life by the second coming of the Great Devourer. In the end, the Eldar's Pyrrhic victory at Craftworld Iandon, combined with the catastrophic conflict on Icar IV, finally halted High Fleet Kraken's seemingly inexorable advance. Hi, I'm Ed, welcome to Minisodes, and in this video I'm going to be having a go at painting space marines from chapters that took part in the Second Tyrannic War. First up, we have the Ultramarines. You've probably heard of them. Two and a half centuries before High Fleet Kraken, the Ultramarines stopped the Tyranids' first incursion into Imperial space at the Battle of Macrag. At Icar IV, the Ultramarines uncovered the Gene Stealer cult responsible for the tumultuous civil war that preceded the arrival of the Kraken. I absolutely love this early Mark VIII sculpt. It's also especially cool to see a Marine at ease, or at least not firing or in the customary battle crouch. I prefer the brighter Kalidor sky to Macrag blue for my Ultras, and applied two thin coats to the model over a black undercoat. The bolter casing was painted Mephiston red. Along with the eye lenses and the gemstone in the centre of the breastplate. I painted the Aquila Avalon Sunset. I wanted this marine to be one of Kalgar's first company so painted the helmet and trim Celestra Grey. I used Drakenhof Nightshade to carefully recess wash the blue armour. And the helmet. I used a very small amount of Agrax Earthshade on the yellow areas, focusing on the recessed areas of the plumage. The last wash I applied was a small amount of Nuln Oil on the lenses. With the washes complete, I was ready for the highlights. I mixed some Kalidor Sky with Hoeth Blue and carefully added these highlights to the upper edges of the blue armour. I then repeated this step several times, each time increasing the ratio of Hoeth Blue but reducing the area of the highlight, keeping to corners and raised edges. I did the same for the gun casing and lenses using Evil Sun Scarlet, then Fire Dragon Bright. I hit the end of each pinion, that's the outer part of the Aquila's wings, with Uriel Yellow. Then a 50-50 mix of Uriel Yellow and Screaming Skull. I highlighted the trim and helmet with a 50-50 mix of Celestra Grey and Ulthwern Grey. Again, I reduced the ratio over several highlights until it was mostly Ulthwern Grey. then used White Scar on the most extreme edges. With the White Scar handy, I carefully added a dot of white to the upper corner of each eye lens. The remaining black areas were highlighted with Dark Reaper, then a mix of Dark Reaper and Penrisian Grey, then Fenrisian Grey. Time for some final touches. I applied Microset to prepare the area. 
I do this just before I apply the transfer, so I have it ready to go to prevent the microset drying up before application. I then apply the transfers. After about four coats of Microsol, the transfers look like this. I then painted them over with some Ard Coat, GW's gloss varnish. And when that was dry, I painted over these areas with Vallejo's matte varnish. Right, I'm going on the record here. I absolutely wanted to give this guy a gritty urban base to fit the, you know, deeply grim and dark setting, which is 40K. But for some reason, I reached for the goblin green. When this was dry, I gave the textured surface a wash of bale tan green. And mixing flash kits yellow into the goblin green, already on my palette, I gave the base a light dry brush. And here we have an ultramarine of the first company in repose, but looking badass. Just a shame about the silly base. The Lamenters. Decimated and censured after the Bad Ab War, the Lamenters would suffer another tragic defeat in the mining worlds of the Devlin system, sacrificing a whole battle company so that civilians might escape onto waiting bulk freighters. Apparently things didn't go too well for the evacuees either. Despite these disasters, the Lamenters endured, laconically believing that every setback only made the chapter stronger. I wanted to go for a melancholy pose here, given the Lamenters' plight, and many of you pointed out on the community page that I was going for the alas poor Yorick trope from Shakespeare's Hamlet. But I did also like the suggestion that the skull belongs to a former sergeant, and this Lamenter relies on it for insight and even orders. I got this 3D printed chapter symbol a few years ago, and the print lines are pretty visible. Hopefully they won't stand out too much once this model's painted. I primed the mini Army Painter's Pixie Pink, then gave it a top-down spray with Wraithbone. I've seen lots of folks saying how good this method is for painting yellow, so I was keen to give it a go myself. I painted the armour Imperial Fist. I think the idea is that when yellow is in shadow, it's purple or dark pink, so this method really complements that. I painted the pauldron with the iconography on it, Uthwan Grey, then Brother Yorick Screaming Skull. The bolter parts outside of the housing were painted Black Legion, along with the cabling you always see on Mark VI armour, and the backpack. I painted the checks off camera, for obvious reasons. The bleeding heart and bolter housing were then painted Mephiston Red, along with the eye lenses. I highlighted the yellow with flash kits yellow. The black was highlighted the same way as on the ultramarine, using Dark Reaper, then mixing and increasing the ratio of Fenrisian grey. The red was highlighted with Evil Sun Scarlet, again mixing Dragonfire Bright in for extreme highlights. Appropriately enough, I painted Brother Yorick with the contrast paint Skeleton Horde. Using thin down Magus Purple, I created some shadow underneath the studs on the Marine's left pauldron. I then painted the base Magos Purple. And after painting the rim of the base several thin coats of Abdon Black, this lamentable Marine of the cursed 21st founding was complete. And now for a chapter I think most of you won't have heard of, the Knights of Eternity chapter. Little is known about the Knights of Eternity, save that as the Tyranids approached, this chapter pledged to defend the worlds that Imperial strategists deemed a lost cause, withdrawing the Imperial Guard and fleet assets to more defensible systems. 
the Knights of Eternity stood alone against the Great Devourer, upholding their vows to defend their fiefdoms no matter the odds. No wonder then that the whole chapter was presumed destroyed by High Fleet Kraken. Their insignia, a shielded memento mori, symbolizes the chapter's maxim, only in death does duty end. Very space, much marine. I wanted to capture a desperate firefight here, so I included a pile of spent shell casings from the Orc Boy Sprue, along with an empty clip. The Space Marine is also mid-reload. I started with a simple undercoat of Wraithbone, and began by painting the cabling and joints Black Legion, along with the bolt gun. Trying something new here, I painted the upper parts of the armour on the torso and legs White Scar in preparation for some contrast shenanigans. I mixed contrast medium with basilicum grey in a 75-25 ratio and applied this to all the white areas. I forgot to add a dot of white to the lenses so I went back and did that quickly. The lenses then got a hit of warp lightning along with the gemstone on the breastplate. Going contrast heavy, I used iand and yellow on the Aquila and also on the one on the Bolter. Time for the red. I wanted a more vibrant hue here, so used Evil Sun Scarlet rather than Mephiston Red. I built this up with several thin coats on the pauldrons, helmet and power plant. I carefully washed the recesses of the red armour, Agrax Earthshade. I used a 50-50 mix of Evil Sun Scarlet and Dragonbright Orange to highlight up the red, then hit the extreme areas with Dragonbright to give this Knight of Eternity lovely, orangey, second edition armour. For the gun casing and cabling, I used Dark Reaper mixed into Fenrisian Grey and a final highlight of Fenrisian Grey. Using Snakebite Leather Contrast, I painted about 25% of the plumage from the innermost points to create a nice contrast. I hit the outer parts of each feather with Screaming Skull. Thank you Squidmar Miniatures for this technique, I think it looks ace. I've avoided using metallics in this video up until this point, but I painted the spent shell casings and the ones visible in the fresh clip, Lead Belcher. While the lead belcher was drying, I carefully coated the ground in a Kellyan green. I then applied snakebite leather over the spent shells, then sparingly hit the shiniest parts with Stormhost silver. I gave this marine a transfer indicating that he was part of a Devastator squad, then starting with a skull transfer in the middle, painted the rest of the chapter symbol by hand. And there we have it, a marine of the Knights of Eternity chapter, quite possibly in his final moments. Now I'm going to level with you here, I was also going to paint a side of the Emperor, as these guys were heavily involved against High Fleet Kraken, losing their homeworld, making an awesome stand at the Battle of Giant's Coffin and even boarding hive ships with scouts. I did start painting a me, but it looked a bit pants, so sorry if you feel a bit shortchanged in this video. Maybe in the future I'll have a go at painting some size of the Emperor for you. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. This weekend I'm looking forward to filming an epic narrative battle report themed around a crucial moment in the Tyrannic Wars. Thanks so much for watching, and see you very soon.